but I was like, yo, God, please. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! Please, God! Don't take me now, Lord! Don't take me now! Hi, guys! Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and Join the revolution. Listen, listen, listen. Laster Mamela, eh, Yingsela, listen. Thank you guys for 6,000 subscribers. <laughs> 6,000 subscribers for the babies. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for all the love and support you've shown my channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution. Be it's time for us to get to 10k. You know what I mean? Like, we got to six, huh? What's four more k so we can get to 10? Huh? Come on. Click now. Eh? Don't be enemy of progress. Don't be enemy of success. Don't be enemy of good things. Just subscribe. You know you want to. So as the title says, I had COVID. And the worst thing is, ne? I got COVID. After I had my vaccine. Okay, well, it was after I had the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. That's weird. I said, hold up. Wait a minute. That's suspicious. That's weird. And I mean, guys, I went to different parts of Hawaii. I went to Vegas. I was making friends with strangers. I was living my best life. I did not get COVID. Had a whole semester of school with a bunch of college students. Did not get COVID until I had the first dose of the vaccine. Something ain't right. I actually did some research about that to find out why on this good earth, why on God's good green earth, alliteration, Am I getting COVID after the vaccine? And it turns out that after you get your first dose, you are, I believe, 60% immune. And then after you get your second dose, you are about, I think, 95% immune. I'm not sure if it was 95 or 99. And so basically, even after you are vaccinated, you are still at risk of catching COVID. So it doesn't prevent you from getting COVID. And also, you might have to get a booster shot every year. And of course, that's not so unusual because much like the flu vaccine it's something that you have to get every single year what I'm not sure about is does the vaccine protect you from different strains of COVID or from just one strain of COVID I'm very curious about that if you know comment down below if you've been vaccinated comment down below um, the reason why I got vaccinated is because the streets are calling my name I'm going to the streets get some more I'm going to the streets the streets are calling my name as you guys can see by the background I'm currently in South Africa meaning I'm back home and so in order for me to be able to travel back to South Africa I thought it was best I get a vaccine not because of going back to South Africa because obviously leaving America is never the problem like <laughs> if you want to leave leave but I was actually thinking about when it's time for me to head back to America just thinking that being vaccinated might help so that they don't give me any trouble at the airport etc etc and obviously I'll probably still have to quarantine anyway that's not what this video is about my vaccination experience is I pretty much got an email saying that if you want to get a vaccine sign up so I signed up and I got an appointment pretty quickly I went to the hospital and then when you go to the front they give you like this little piece of paper that tells you that you know pretty much if anything happens to you who is your business hey and I think they were telling you about possible side effects and that if anything like this happens contact your doctor immediately um, and then yeah they send you to one of the people who are doing the vaccinations so when I went to the table it was really a quick prick it was a very quick prick and it didn't even hurt you know sometimes with injections or vaccines when the liquid goes inside of you that's where the pain is but there was no pain not in the prick not in the insertion nothing so it was a pretty painless process and then after you have your vaccine they make you wait in a waiting room for about 15 minutes and the reason for that 
that is so that if you experience anything like dizziness, if you faint, if you turn into a chicken or a goat, or you know, any one of the big five, they'll be there to pretty much assist you. And then they set up your next dose about three weeks after the first one. And the second dose pretty much goes just like the first one, they make you wait. And then after that you're done. And I guess next year we'll hear again about the vaccinations. So again, if you live in a different country, let us know how the vaccinations are going in your country. I know in SA right now they're going kind of slow. Personally, I feel like the Beyonce of my family because I'm the only one that's vaccinated, you know? So I'm like, you guys must talk to me nice, please. Vaccin unvaccinated people must talk to vaccinated people nice, please. Sorry, sorry. But anyway, going into my COVID experience, I got COVID and it kicked my I would say the first three to four days were the worst. I was shivering. I was freezing cold and I mean freezing like it was really warm outside it was actually pretty hot outside people were in shorts and when I say people I mean all people y'all know that some white people be wearing shorts when it's snowing outside you know what I'm saying so when I say it was hot outside I mean everybody <laughs> was wearing shorts so it's pretty hot outside but I was freezing and let me tell you something guys yo 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 me I was praying to God I was like no God because you know when people die they get cold or like I think when they're dying they get cold and then when they die they're cold I was like God please not me Lord please <laughs> no God please no no I just need your touch Lord just one touch one touch and everything changes God he touched me I'm telling you he touched me that's why I'm alive today I was also really 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 fatigued I was exhausted and I mean 24 7 I was tired I did not get tired of sleeping I could literally sleep all day all night because it's this exhaustion that comes from the inside even if it's not even about sleeping because you'll sleep and you'll wake up and you'll be tired you won't even be sleepy but you'll be tired and so obviously the only thing you can do when you're tired is sleep i was also really 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 weak you know when you have that i don't know if it's a cold or fever but or flu i don't know what the word is but you know that one that hurts your muscles i don't know if you guys have ever had it that one where like when people just touch you it hurts you you can't you don't have the strength to move like all you can do is just lay there i don't know if you guys ever experienced that but that's what i was going through for the first four days like moving was painful walking was painful everything was painful my body was so don't even touch me oh and of course i did not have an appetite whatsoever i really did not want to eat anything um and i I felt hot like if you felt my forehead and my body I was actually really hot even though on the inside I was freezing but my temperature however was not above the um, you know there's a I don't know <laughs> I don't know what the standard is but when I had COVID I knew but whatever the standard is of what normal temperature is it was not above that however um, I did feel really awful but yeah so that was for the first four days however after those four days it's sort of like I transitioned into new symptoms so my muscles were not sore anymore however I I was still quite tired um, not as tired as those four days but still quite tired and also I got lightheaded very very easily a little bit of walking a little bit of just you know activity would make me have to like sit down because I was really lightheaded I lost my taste I lost my smell entirely like there was nothing and then in terms of the medication that I took I took Dayquil Nyquil and I also took vitamin C and vitamin D um, and they were above 1000 and I also took zinc which was I think about above 500 um, but yeah guys that's pretty much all that I took I was drinking water obviously I drank tea Mm, I didn't do anything extraordinary. I didn't like go steam myself or like, you know, I didn't, you know, that's that's pretty much all I did. Oh, oh, I did take a nasal spray as well because I think I had a runny nose. Oh, and how could I forget to mention? Also, my nose was bleeding a lot. Like I had nose bleeds almost every single day I had COVID. What was scary about my COVID experience is that I did not have my family. So as you guys know, I'm studying accounting in America and my family lives in South Africa because I am South African. And um, apart from being in America for studying I live in South Africa so my whole family was in South Africa so I was not you know I did not have the physical support of my family you know when you're sick they're able to bring you food make you porridge oh I was craving porridge guys you know make you porridge and just take care of you so I didn't have that and just sometimes to have them around to reassure you you know what I mean and also another thing is when they wanted to check on me they had to call me so I had to make sure my phone was on all the time otherwise they would think I'm dead literally and uh, and 
but the difficult thing about that is sometimes they call me when I'm resting or I'm sleeping you know and then it, it just interrupts your flow and also sometimes I was just too tired to talk like literally in those first four days I did not have the energy to talk and so that made it hard for me but it made it hard for them as well because that means I mean if I was at home obviously they could just open the door see if I'm breathing or like throw a rock and make sure I'm alive or something what I know my mom was just like pretty stressed out. It's just pretty, she fasted. From the day I got COVID to the day I said I was fine, she literally fasted the whole way. But yeah, so while I didn't have my family, I did get a lot of support from my family that I have at school. They brought me food, they took really good care of me. I had people going to buy my meds. I definitely think that the battle of COVID is definitely a mental one as much as it is a physical one. I mean, I had to tell myself that I am not going to die. And for me to have that confidence really, especially in those first few days, I make jokes about it now, but I was like, yo, God, please. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! Please, God! You know, I was like, no, don't take me now, Lord, don't take me now! It's gonna take a miracle from God. And you know, when I was making that prayer, bruh, I ran to that verse. You know the one that says the Lord has given and the Lord has taken away? Hey! Oh! Please, 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 please! Ha! Yo, guys! I was stressed. I was so stressed. But I said, God, no, I will not die, but I will live to proclaim the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It's definitely a mental battle having to tell myself I'm not going to die and staying away from Twitter because on Twitter, people just talk about how everybody's dead and everything sucks and stuff. So staying away from Twitter and also just making sure I keep myself alive even though I'm too weak. So try watching a TV show. I could never finish anything. Um, just watching TV shows and praying and I would join like my church's live sessions so yeah just mentally trying to keep myself you know above board and um, something that can be overwhelming as well is when everybody just it's, it's funny right because you need people to fuss over you but sometimes people fussing over you can make things difficult for you you know one of the things that's difficult about being ill is you have to be strong for other people meaning when my mom called me I mean those first four days I didn't have the strength to be okay or pretend to be okay but uh, but definitely when my mom called me when my dad called me when my pastor called me me, I would sometimes have to just like put on a brave face, put on a smile, try to look strong so that they could have hope, so that they could be of good cheer, you know, because hey, sometimes showing the reality of the state that you're in can really be disheartening for those that love you. So you find yourself having to be strong, not just for yourself, but for other people. And it does keep you strong as well. Being strong for others can also keep you strong or it can make you tired, it depends on the situation. Some closing remarks about my experience with COVID. What sucked is this happened in my finals week, like literally. The week I had COVID, I think I had like two exams and one presentation and two assignments. So thank God my one exam got moved, but the other exam I took it and you know, you know, you know saying I got 90%, I got 90 something percent. <laughs> you know the vibes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Um, but yeah, so, and I think for my presentation as well, I got like 90 something and for the one assignment again, I got like 90 something. So, you know, despite being in a horrible state and it was difficult to study. You know, when I went into that test, I was like, God, hey, this one, hey, this one I'm leaving in your hands though. Eh, I, 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 I'm leaving in your hands this one, you know, because I was just, I was too tired to study. I was too tired to like just, you know, but yeah, I did manage to come out successfully with that one. Another thing that sucked about COVID is it came, I think about, a week or two before I was supposed to travel and here's the unfortunate part is number one before you travel you have to provide a negative COVID test taken 72 hours before your travel now the tricky thing about getting COVID is that even though you recover after your 10 days 14 days mine was 10 days is you may still test positive so I was like yo like that was really stressing me out and another thing is the vaccine they say that if you get COVID in between your vaccination period that you actually should refrain from getting the second dose and wait for like three months before you get it and I was like I don't have three months but thank god I was able to get vaccinated and what my doctors told me is that as long as I don't have any symptoms then I'm allowed to go get the second dose so by the time it was time for my second dose literally I got out of isolation on the day I was supposed to get my vaccine like literally on the day but thank god I didn't have any symptoms so I was able to get my second vaccine and as you can tell I'm in South Africa so I was able to travel home thank god and also my COVID test came back negative so whew, that was fantastic but in the end all's well that ends well I fully recovered now and I'm back home I don't regret getting vaccinated in the end I mean unless I die or like turn into a chicken 
I don't see why not. Anyway, before I end of this video, I just really want to give all thanks, all praise, all honor, all glory, all adoration, all admiration to the Most High God, the one who was, who is, and is to come, Yahweh, Alpha and Omega, Al Shaddai, El Roy, the God that sees me, Adonai, the Most High God. I am that I am, bigger than the biggest, higher than the highest, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the Most High, all praise. Thank you, God. And really heavy on the thank you, God, because we know there are so many people who had COVID and did not live to see the story. I didn't survive because I'm the healthiest person out there or because I'm like uber special or even because I took like the best medication. No, I didn't. Really, it is by the grace of God. And also my family, my whole family had COVID and every single one of them survived. And I mean, my parents were literally on their deathbed to the point where they were talking to me and my brother about, you know, plans if they pass away and what we need to do. Like it was that bad so really I just want to thank God for my life and the life of my family however on the flip side I want to send out my heart to anyone who has lost family due to COVID lost family lost a friend uh, lost anyone close to you because of COVID my sincerest condolences to you and I really pray that God comfort you and your family and their family like really COVID is a difficult one it's a tricky one like COVID doesn't have a um, pastors have died from COVID you know holy people have died from COVID I'm Holy people have died from COVID. Rich and poor have died from COVID. Like, it's a, it's 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 a really crazy thing. And I really hope that God just you know get us out of this situation and get us out of it quick. And most certainly, I hope that it's not a man-made thing. Comment down below if you guys think it's man-made. I think if it's man-made, really, that is the, the like that person or those people deserve hell seven times over because that is evil. That is wickedness. That is just, anyway, let me not, this, this video is not about that. That's it for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe, and I will be back with more videos. Peace and love, guys. <laughs>